Hey guys, what is up? Here is today's Wyckoff Wednesdays episode. Today I'm going to be going over a little trick that I learned. I think a lot of you guys are going to find it very useful. Um, the trade that I'm going to be covering, honestly, is not the best trade in the world, but I'm not here to show you all the trades that work out, and I'm not here to show you all the trades that, you know, do exactly what we think. I'm here to show you guys some tricks I've learned that have helped me become profitable and you know that they've helped me avoid losing money as frequently and really today's trade highlights why what i'm going to show you guys can actually help you you know even if you're wrong not lose money so i was looking at usd chf this morning um during new york leading into new york and what i noticed was we had this um selling volume here so we had this selling volume right and then we looked at the 50 percent level of it so 50 percent of this lines up with this inefficiency in the market and it also lines up with the open of this right here right so in addition to those things this level also was where people were likely trying to buy because some retail traders um, coming into New York, probably saw this movement here. They saw that we were forming a wedge. So they marked it up, I guess. And what did the banks do? They enticed them with a pin bar here and then took them out with this swift movement and they came back up. Granted, it chopped around for the remainder of the day, but the idea is that they were squeezing price um, consolidating, right? Enticing people to go along here. People bought, had a little reaction. It shot down and then went back up going in the proper direction. So this was a level of interest for us. And I'd also like to note that this push actually came into this right here, this, um, you know, the selling volume before the massive buying up. So looking at it this morning, what did we do? We trickled down all morning, right? Trickle down, trickle down, trickle down. And then come New York session, we had what looked like, right? So this is the open of equities. And when I say New York, I'm specifically referring to equities. So equities, right? Now we are within our trading window. My trading window is personally anytime after uh, equities open because anything before any candles and efficiency, whatever. It just doesn't hold. It's something I've noticed and it's something that took a lot of time to realize. But once I saw that, I stopped trading before the open of equities. It's just seriously not even worth it. So that leads us into the second thing I want to talk about, uh, the main topic of this video. The second thing I noticed is that after equities are like really immediately after open, you'll get what looks like a break of structure. So here, here's equities open. And then what do we get about 15 minutes later? We get a break of structure above this high, right? But here's the thing. So I'm convinced that the institutions know that people understand or are learning smart money. So I think that the banks are now manipulating the smart money trades. And I believe uh, with really good reason that I see one of their main tactics. And this isn't because I saw it one time or two times. I've seen this happen time and time again. And some of the people that we mentor have also seen this happen. They, you know, they will ask, why aren't my levels holding? Well, it's not that you're not picking the right levels. It's that you're not picking the right levels at the right time. So what I mean by that is here, you have this level. This is a, this is a reasonable level to look for buys, right? Because we had this liquidity, we had these lows taken out and efficient movement, right? That we did not come back into. We need to come balance the market out. So that's what we're looking at here, okay? Now, coming into it, during equities open or after, you would be looking, for me personally, I would only be looking to trade after that, that opening bell, right? I've said that a couple of times now. So now from here on, here on, I'm looking for trades, right? What happens? Push up, 
supposed break of structure right here. So it looks like we broke structure at this level, but we did not in the sense that we ran it one more time. So yes, technically we did break this level, right? But at the same time, I've seen time and time again that we will run out the, the last lower low and a downtrend in the last higher high and an uptrend. So in an uptrend, it'll look something like this. Say you have a point of interest here, it'll look like this. You'll do the same thing. You'll come up, come up, push down, run the higher high one more time, and then go. And this is the perfect tactic. Think about it. People who are well-versed in trading, aka smart money traders, will see this as a legitimate break of structure with inefficiency left in the market that we need to fill. So it would be logical to take a trade here and notice what it does. Wick, 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 right? Sweeps it out one more time and then continues up. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not highlighting this trade because it was perfect. I'm not highlighting this trade because, you know, things like these work all the time. That's not the case. But what is true is that seeing this pattern every time, I know to avoid the initial break of structure in most cases. It, there isn't a set in stone way to know when it is or is not going to hold, but I can tell you that more often than not, it is not going to hold. They, they create these false breaks of structure immediately after New York like this. So equities open immediately after about 15, 20 minutes, break of structure, entice people to go long during New York session, take them out one more time and then push up. They'll do that directly after equities open or directly before. They'll entice people before. So those are the trades that I really like because you will see a break of structure leading people to believe that they are going to see a reversal. So here, break of structure. Let's say this is pre-New York and we run the high one more time, right? And then we get that really significant push um, throughout the day. So here, let's say that the, the open was right here. What you'll see is before the New York or equities open, you get this BOS, you get what you think is going to be a push up to test this region. But what do they do? Run it out one more time and then go. And I really like this version of this like pattern, I guess, compared to this version. Because here, the likely reason it did not give us the, the movement we wanted is because New York, the, the initial volume of New York was gone. This was the initial volume, right? The initial volume in this case is what led to the false break of structure. Here, we get a false break of structure beforehand. And then the momentum or the strength of New York session can really push us down uh, far enough away from our entry that we can move stops to break even and secure partials. Now, in something like this, where you break the structure, as far as entry goes, um, I'll show you on down here too on, on the live trade. But here, what you'll see is you'll get this BOS, a push up. And then on the lower time frames, you'll start chopping like this. And then you'll get one more little push like that. So really, the sequence looks like this. You'll get pushes up, pushes up, break a structure, run it out one more time. Then you'll come below the level that was the supposed BOS. So you'll come below the low in the case of a reversal and an uptrend, you'll come below the low that broke structure, but led to a false break of structure. Because if this was real, we would not make a higher high relative to this and we would just continue down. So after you see this movement and the break below this level, you will see consolidation and then a little push up and then a fall. This little push up really isn't ever too significant, but this is what happens. And then the momentum you see here is from the New York session. So with today's trade, like I said, the, the break of structure, the false break of structure happened right after the open of equities. Now, what did we do? We had a push 
here, took out this low. And what did I notice? It is risky. Um, don't get me wrong. It was a risky trade, but I was completely fine with it being risky trade. So we had this three minute candle recognizing here that this wick was a break above this structure here on the smaller time frames, like the one minute. And if I had the 30 second, it would be even more obvious. But seeing this, <clears throat> this was a run on these lows and this low, and then a break of structure here, come down, test, 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 and then go. So my stop was just below this, right? So enter here because this box is the three minute candle that I was looking at. Stops below this because I know that on the 30 second or the 15 second, this is probably a series of candles that have been filled. So all the candles here have been filled. So I don't think price will come lower than this. And now where would a one to one have been at? It would have been within this candle. So within a couple minutes, you're up a one to one, move stocks, to, stops, sorry, to break even, secure partials, right? Secure partials at equal highs right here, which we could have done, would have hit that. So that was a one to three. And my overall target was a bit higher. It wasn't a higher time frame level because I'm, you know, I personally do not like taking higher time frame trades. But this was where I wanted price to go. Now, did it hit that? No. Did it eventually come back to break even? Yes, it did. But the thing is, that you got up a one-to-one, -one, you move stops to break even, and then you secured partials once, you secured partials twice, maybe even three times at these highs. And right here, it would have been up like a one-two, I think, yeah, so this is level, about a one-to-three. So that's just something I've seen that happens time and time again around equities open, either before or after. I prefer the, the false break of structure happening before because then we get that that New York strength or that New York volatility to push us in the proper direction after faking everybody out. Or in this case, this works too. You know, the false BOS happened after equities open and you got a reaction after you ran, ran the low. And then on the smaller time frame, that's kind of what I showed you guys. We generate liquidity, we sweep it, and then we mitigate something in here. Or right after we do this on the smaller time frames, right? Right after we do this on the smaller time frames, we mitigate right within here and then fall. So that looks horrible, but you guys get the idea. That's exactly what we did here. Lows, swept, little break of structure here, come back down right there, test, and then head up, right? We achieved a one-to-one, one, one to three, secured partials, stops to break even, everything's good. I didn't lose any money. If I had jumped in here, right, I see this. BOS, come down, test, test, test. I want to take it long, right? Nope, you get taken out one more time. So that's just something I've noticed that's been one of the biggest things that has helped me. I uh, talked to one of our students the other day about this and he said it blew his mind and that it, it all really made sense. I think you guys will hopefully see the value in this. Um, it happened to me a lot, have enough times for me to realize, okay, something has got to be up. What is it? I identified it and I've seen this happen time and time again, which is what really validates uh, my assumption that the banks are manipulating uh, smart money traders in this sense, in a couple of others that we'll cover in future videos. But for me, this has really been one of the biggest things I've realized in, in recent times. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys aren't upset that I didn't pick the most beautiful trade in the world, but I'm not here to show you all the trades that work out. I'm here to show you what trading really is. So as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please comment or message us on Telegram at Aerial FX Trading. Bye guys.